Hi guys, how we doing? Hope you're all well. So if you guys remember in the last video, oh, my stop here. Oh, I have to reset my fault. Mm, nice. Okay. Yeah. So in the last video, we made this lovely program that we've got here using this push button station. Just phenomenal. I absolutely love it. So um, what we're doing now in this video, which is quite exciting to be honest, but it's going to be a short one. Uh, currently right now I'm powering this thing here off of my bench power supply which is this here and you can see it's got you know 80 milliamps of current 24.5 volts now this isn't ideal you know you wouldn't use this big giant system big giant power supply now you can get smaller power supplies as well but generally speaking what you'll find and it, basically you'll find industrial power supplies and so I went and bought one and it is this beautiful thing this sit up, sit up, sit up, Siemens, I don't know, sit up, sit up, whatever it is, uh, 24 volt power supply. It, this is an old one, I paid 25 pounds for it on eBay. Basically, I don't need it, but this fan on this power supply here is loud, as you can hear there. And uh, secondly, this has some cool features which I'm probably not going to use, but like I said uh, originally, the purpose of this video series is for me to get as much experience as possible and one of the things I haven't done yet is I haven't cut a cable so one of these I haven't cut one of these before and plugged it into my plug in my house mains and had exposed free um, exposed exposed main cables and I've been scared of doing that, and so that's what I'm going to have to do in this video to power this thing. Because you've got to put mains into here, and then you get 24 volts out there. This thing, I'll run through some of the specs, because what I've done is I've printed off the data sheet for it. So I'll, I'll go through some of the specs with you. But I can tell you now, some of the main features with this power supply are, for example, it's rated at 5 amps, right? It has a feature, for example, whereby it can give you extra boost of power for um, short power spikes. And at the same time... It can deliver like a, a, a ridiculous amount uh, of current way above the rated 5 amps, which obviously my power supply, bench power supply here is not going to be able to do. In terms of temperature, it's an industrial rugged power supply, so it can work from like minus 25 degrees up to like 70, 80 degrees heat. And on top of that, the main thing with these things, which is quite cool, is that these standard bench power supplies are like 30, 40% efficient. Well, this thing here, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like in the high 80s in terms of efficiency. So there's a lot of benefit to this. Let's just get it wired up so I'll show you how it works. I'm just going to have to cut this thing up and then, yeah, wire it up and then we can do away with my power supply. And the plan is I've, I've bought some MDF board, also some the other board. I'll show you one second. Whatever this board is, basically, I think it's perf board. I don't know what you call this, but so I bought some MDF board and some of this board and I'm going to, I'm planning on mounting the PLC onto this. This is a bit thinner. The MDF board I've got is a bit thicker. And so obviously I can't mount one of these big chunky power supplies uh, onto that, but you, you can obviously mount this. This just goes onto a DIN rail, which I will do in a video because I, I do want to keep it all clean. So that will just go mounted all together and sit nicely together. So yeah, let's wire this up. <sighs> I've never cut one of these before. Wish me luck. All right, I shouldn't need to say this, but obviously if you're gonna cut this, don't have it plugged in. Bloody hell, mate. I'm gonna leave a bit. I don't know, I don't quite imagine myself ever resoldering this on, but maybe it might be useful. All right, so there it is, the inside of it. And then how do I go about stripping this thing? Okay. Now the question is, are any of those wires damaged? That looks like that could possibly be damaged. But yeah, so you've got obviously earth and then I believe positive, negative, don't actually know let's just confirm I, again me and mains i'm not i'm yeah all right so brown is live blue is neutral and green and yellow is earth if that makes sense to you <laughs> my assumption here is that i want as little off this as possible because i don't want any of it exposed meaning i don't want any of the bare cable exposed right I bought a bunch of these crimp tools, so I need to find an appropriate connector. All right, so I've done two. I'll just show you the next, the second one or the last one I'm doing. So I just take this wire, twist it, because I don't want any strands bending backwards, and then 
feed this through onto there, like so. Take my crimp tool, stick it in there, and then done. I do recommend getting one of these crimp tools. This is what my mentor at work showed me, and honestly, just phenomenal. Way better than the other weird stuff. So those are my three wise crimped. I actually cut myself. <laughs> I just cut myself off camera. <laughs> Not good. Now, here's what I'm not happy with. I'm not happy with the fact that they're all just so close together. So I'm going to strip this wire back, I think. Really, I should make them like different lengths as well. I just want to do whatever I can to prevent the short. All right, so it should be fairly straightforward. Take me, obviously make sure it's unplugged. <laughs> I've electrocuted myself before, so. Stick that in there. And I suppose the only thing you really care about is the fact that there is no metal exposed so neutral into neutral and i just want to make sure this is in tight man again like i said this is my first ever time messing about with a mains cable there we go now what i did was i stuck some shrink wrap shrink shrink wrap can't speak shrink wrap on here because I cut into the cable a little bit, nibbed it a little bit into the casing. I didn't actually see any exposed wire, but I didn't want to risk it. So plug it in. And I heard something click. There's no LED. Oh, wait, is that an LED in there? Turn off on what? Okay, there you go. <laughs> My room was too bright. Okay, so we've got 24 volts. Okay, so if we stick a multimeter. Okay, 24 volts. And here. 24 volts, nice. So we've got a, a, a proper 24.1 volts. Cool, working. Now my concern as a parent is that my kids might come and play with this and touch that. So I'm just gonna put my multimeter across that. I need to put it into AC, right? So AC voltage and let's just confirm we do have Scares the crap out of me. 243 volts. So, I'd like to just put like some tape across that or something, but I don't want to short it. <laughs> I don't want these terminals exposed. I mean, they're, they're screwed in, right? But, hmm. if you have a good way to cover these, let me know, please. I can see there as well that I've actually got some exposed ground cable, which I don't think that'll be a problem, but I'm just going to shrink wrap it as well. All right, so now what I've got to do is I've got to get 24 volts on the end of these two wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two wires and I've actually bought other cables. Now, I believe 24 volts should, sorry, yeah, 24, 24 volt, 24 volts, bloody hell I can't speak, should be blue and orange. I don't have those colours. I have red and black, which I paid like £10 for this, which is apparently like super flexible, I think 16 gauge wire, red and black. And then I bought some other, I don't know why I got yellow, but I bought five meters of yellow cable as well for £6.50. So these are the colors I got. I should have probably have gotten orange and uh, blue. But again, unfortunately, my salary for my new job is low, low, like super low. So I'm on a budget. And that means, yeah wrong colors just strip some of this cable and you know what this cable is quality man like i mean it feels amazing super soft <laughs> not that it matters and it's only carrying 24 volts but really good cable and there we go i'm done so i now have wired in my nice big chunky 24 volt it's like 600 volt but 24 volt output cables into my plc and it's silent now i don't need to talk over that big fan workbench uh, and if I now Works like a charm So I suppose The only thing I just want to talk about Is just you know why this bench power supply And I did manage to have a quick look And I found So for example The workbench Sorry did I, call, I called this a bench power supply Why this sit up industrial power supply So my workbench power supply Although I'm the big fan that has an efficiency of about 30 to 40%, whilst this one's efficiency here is 88%, which is incredible. And you know, if you've got a bunch of these in the factory or whatever, you do wanna make sure that you've got a nice efficient power supply. So let's just quickly run through some of the stats. I don't fully understand these stats, but I'm doing it so I can learn and then you know you can learn along with me. 
So interestingly here, I'm just going to pick out things that I noticed. So we've got input current here. So from, from mains is 1.36 amps, but it can handle up to 40 amps of. So if you have a mad current spike, this thing can still handle 40 amps, which is quite cool. It's got a small ripple output voltage of 30 millivolts, typical 150 millivolts max. So apparently you can adjust the output voltage 22.8 up to 28 volts which I did see a potentiometer in there or like a screw in there so if you have a look I'll show you there so I'm wondering if that's to adjust the output voltage so the output current is 5 amps obviously so interesting the short term overload current so on short circuiting during the startup typical 18 amps at short circuit during operation typical 18 amps what I understand from that is that, does that mean if needed, it can output 18 amps of current for a short period? I'm guessing that's what that means. So we've got the 88% efficiency. So, I mean, I don't, I must say, I don't really understand much of this. But one thing I wanted to try and get my head around, but I wasn't able to, is design of the over voltage protection, protection against over voltage in case of internal fault, fault V out is less than 33 volts. Uh, in, I was talking to my my manager the other day, and he did mention that if I short, if I reverse polarity the, um, I'm starting to look like Michael Jackson with all these plasters, but yeah, uh, if I reverse, if I put in put this into a HMI the wrong way around, that the power supply would deal with it and prevent the short or prevent the reverse polarity via its short circuit protection. So maybe that's got something to do with it. I don't know. Right, so this is what I was interested in. So in terms of its ambient temperature, during operation, it can deal with down to minus 25 degrees Celsius, which is incredible. You know, you're talking about being in a freezing environment and you have this and this would still be able to work fine, you know, in freezing temperatures and then up to 70 degrees. So you're talking about in Saudi Arabia, this thing will still be all right. And total weight is half a kilo. So other than that, I mean... That's the data sheet. I didn't really understand much of it. This thing's actually been discontinued. So you got uh, X approval no longer available. So it's been discontinued. There's a whole bunch of these, there's newer versions. The ones that might that we use at work are like almost three times the size. But yeah, I'm happy I bought this, you know. Did I need it? The answer is no, I didn't need it. But my thing works, which I'm happy with. And we're starting to build up, you know, an industrial looking setup so i look forward to getting this thing mounted so yeah thanks for watching guys and um next video I'm not sure what i'm doing please if you have any advice leave it down below i'd like to mount this thing on a board i think that would look quite sick so i might do that next video uh yeah cool see you guys in the next one take care bye bye